Good morning and welcome to the Anthony Petiti Organic Gardening Show. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm Cindy Petiti, your host, and we are in the height of our season. Everyone getting ready for Mother's Day and planting their gardens and sprucing up their landscapes, doing their spring cleanups. So much going on. So we are going to get right into it um, right after we say a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you. And Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your grace and your blessings, Father. We just ask that you use what we have to give to people the way you want it presented, Father. Just use my words um, to help others be able to learn about how to care for what you have given us. Father, just use me and lead me and guide me. Give me your knowledge and your wisdom and just Use me as you see fit, Father. I just ask you in this, in your precious name, amen. Well, thank you again for being with me. And many of you have been into the store um, that listen to our show every week. And I thank you so much for that. Um, And a lot of people have been in with a lot of issues. So um, we want to answer those questions, of course, and then let you know of some of the things that um, are going on at the greenhouse and um, what we have um, on sale and what we have ready to go for you. And, you know, a lot of you this weekend are preparing for Mother's Day. Um, And so this is when you should be, you know, remembering mom and what she would like. And, you know, a lot of moms doesn't like a dozen roses, um, or, you know, they might like a dozen roses, but they're going maybe appreciate um, a plant that's going to last them all summer long a little bit more than a dozen roses. No offense to all of my florist friends, but, um, you know, something that's going to last them all summer or maybe a perennial or a shrub that's going to last for years and years. And so we did get a new shipment of perennials in this year, this week, and um, I believe it was Wednesday. So we have, you know, the blooming creeping flocks and we have pulmonaria, um, campanellas that are blooming, um, just uh, so many different um, perennials blooming and ornamental grasses that are in. So this is really a great time um, to come over and get some of those kind of things. And then also, you know, the hanging baskets are beautiful, um, blooming in the greenhouse, um, planters for the patio, and maybe not, um, you're not doing this for your mom, but you need planters for your home, um, or maybe for graduation parties, um, you know, different types of things going on. So we have those beautiful planters. We have the small pots and the flats so that you can build your own planters if you have your own. And also a lot of people are taking advantage of this. They will bring their planters over to the greenhouse. You do your shopping and then you plant your planters at our place and then you can take them home or you can leave them for a fee and we will keep them in the greenhouse where it's warmer and they grow faster. Um, So we do have a couple options for you if you decide to do your planting at the greenhouse so we can do that for you also. Um, so, um, a lot of you are dealing with issues, um, right now, and some are odd issues and others are very, very common. Um, one of the ones that we don't see happen a lot, um, a lady was in this week and she says she has white fly on her rosemary. She overwinters her rosemary, um, inside. She has it planted in a pot. It's outside during the summer, um, and spring, early fall. She brings it in, in the pot. Um, keeps it inside for the winter. She noticed um, early this week that she had white fly on her rosemary, which white fly is not a real common insect on your rosemary. Mealybug is one of the more common ones. Mealybug will look like um, little teeny pieces of white cotton um, in the Um, arches or the grooves of the plant where the little um, needled leaf um, attaches to the branch or where the branch attaches to the main stem, you'll notice um, that little white um fuzziness in there. And that is mealybug. Now she had white fly. She said she noticed them flying around. And usually if you have white fly on your rosemary, since it's not a real common insect for rosemary, you probably have white fly on some other house plant in your house. So you might want to check for that. Um, Mite X is a wonderful product for that by Bonide. Um, Also Captain Jack's, another one that is very good um, for the white fly. And also both of them will kill the mealybug. 
Um, I probably prefer um, for the mealybug or the white fly the mite X over the Captain Jacks, but Captain Jacks has other benefits of killing other insects that the mite X might not do as well on. So if you have the Captain Jacks, definitely go ahead and use it. The trick is 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 spraying down in those little grooves where those leaves attach to the branch and where the branch attaches to the stem, it's going to be a good idea to really saturate those areas and let the, the material um, run down the stem and get caught in each one of those little uh, grooves and also on the undersides of the leaves. And this is going to be on any of your plants, not just your rosemary, but that underside is where the adult lays their egg so that they're protected from, you know, the rain or watering or any of those kind of things. And so if you want to kill them as an, in, as an egg so that they don't get to the adult form and do more damage to your plant, um, it's always a good idea to spray the bottom side. So you can do it a couple different ways. Um, you can get under it with your spray bottle, um, or you can put the plant up on a shelf that's above you so that you can actually see and spray all of those areas. And that might help you um, be able to overcome um, the difficulty of getting your hand under there with the bottle if you don't have good maneuverability um, underneath that plant. But always spray the bottom side of that and you're going to um, have better results. Another issue that um, some folks were having this week um, on their seedlings. So they started their tomato um, plants as a seed in their house. Um, now they're eight, 10 inches tall, doing very well, um, but now they've noticed aphids. And aphids can be an issue on a lot of new plants. They like that new soft tissue. That's what aphids are attracted to. So if you have aphids on your tomatoes, or a lot of times in the greenhouse, we notice it on very young peppers. Um, this is when you want to get them taken care of as soon as you notice it. Um, if they're inside with you, um, because you know you have them inside right now because it's too cold to put them outside, maybe go ahead and take them out into the garage um, and spray them really good. Again, Midex is great for aphids, absolutely amazing for aphids. This is one, if you have the Captain Jacks, do not waste your time or money spraying Captain Jacks. The active ingredient spumosid does not have good effect on aphids. So use the Midex or if you have neem oil, neem oil also works very well um, on your aphids. Also an insecticidal soap um, is going to work very well on that. And that, and when I refer to an insecticidal soap, that is not you squirting some Dawn dishwashing liquid into a bottle and adding some water, shaking it up and spraying. That is not what I'm talking about when I say insecticidal soap. Actually, Dawn is not one of the best um, ones to put on there because it will actually pull out because it has that drying effect. Um, you know, it pulls grease and oils. It will pull oils out of the plant and is really not good for it. So Dawn is not the insecticide um, that some people think that they should use, squirt a little bit of Dawn in. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um, also, the chemicals that go into dishwashing detergents, dishwashing liquids, is not something that I really want to put on my plants. So when I talk about an insecticidal soap, it is a, a bottle that is labeled by a company as insecticidal soap. It has fatty acids in it, um, and it's measured out the correct way um, so that you don't burn your plants and those kind of things. But those are going to work on aphids. So take the plants outside, um, give them a good spray, let them dry, and then bring them back in. Right now, when we are having some warmer temperatures at night, um, it's going to be safe to go ahead and leave them out in the garage. You don't need to bring them in. Um, last night, um, was in the mid 30s and that it looks like the last night of 30 degree temperatures we have in the next 10 day forecast. So I think that um, as of today, you could probably leave them out into the in the garage all the time unless they're really small. And if your plants are really small, um, it's going to be best to bring them in like 
put them outside during the day so that they get um, acclimated to the outside, but at night, bring them in. Um, Even in the 40s, um, it's really going to cool down the soil temperature of their little cell pack that you have them in, and that's going to slow down growth. So if you bring it in, most likely your house is 60 or above, And that's going to keep that soil warmer and the plant's going to continue to grow and then shift them back outside for the day. Remember, like we have said in the past couple weeks, when you're putting these new tender plants outside, don't throw them right out into the sun. Um, Someone did that um, last week. They came in and picked up their um, rhubarb and then on the really nice warm days that we had earlier in the week they had them outside on the south side of their house they have been inside all this time they put them outside and left them outside all day long and then they called me and said they're wilting um why do they look like this and so you never put a plant that's been indoors Um, started from a seed or if it's been indoors like a house plant or a tropical that you take outside um, in the summer and bring in for the winter you never just throw it right outside it's going to um, get sunburnt just like you would if you're fair complected and you are indoors all winter and then the first time it's 80 degree sunny day you spend the entire day outside in the sun you're going to get a sunburn and the same exact thing is going to happen to that leaf tissue um, to your plants so you want to make sure that you gradually put them out a couple hours on the east side your first day maybe four hours on the east side of your house the second day or maybe even the north side and just push them out a little bit further and then um, the third or fourth day put them out on the west side um, where they're getting some of the hotter sun or the south side where they're getting some hotter sun and do that for a couple hours and then um, do it for four hours the following day make this like a pretty much a week process of gradually getting your plants outside until they've graduated to an entire day outside before you just throw them out because you will be sadly disappointed in how badly they fare if you just throw them out especially um, a two or three inch tomato plant um, it might have you know it's true leaves and it might have four of them but you throw it out and it's going to get sunburned it, there will be no return on them so you really want to make sure that you're watching um, those kind of things um, but you really do want to get them outside get the air get them hardened off also you will have less insect issues if you are um, doing that and if you are getting them outside there where they have better airflow and um, the insects can get blown off by the wind but that's where um, how you're going to want to do that well we're going to go ahead and take a short break and hear from our sponsors habitat for humanity and bull country compost thanks so much for being with us hang on we'll be right back well, thank you so much for staying with me. And um, here we are back in the second half of our show. We want to, again, thank our sponsors, Bull Country Compost and Habitat for Humanity. We all know all the wonderful things that Habitat for Humanity does. And make sure that you check out the ReStore because every day there is something new at the ReStore. And Bull Country Compost, will you all know my heart of Bull Country Compost. I love this product. I recommend this product over and over and over. And um, we just have found Found that so many plants do so well um, with Bull Country compost added into the soil. And I know several people, my friend Christina, she literally plants in Bull Country compost. Um, she has no issues with burning or irrigation. She has no issues at all. And she grows beautiful, beautiful um, plants and she gets great harvest so she because she cans and she freezes and she needs a good harvest Um, and she's all organic and she has wonderful results so you can plant directly in bull country compost if you're planting in the ground and you're doing raised beds you can just use the bull country compost Um, um, but if you're doing containers I do recommend um, doing about a 50-50 blend um, or even a 75% potting soil with a 25% bull country in your containers it is a fabulous product Um, we love it for so many different things it also is great to top dress um, an area that has been newly seeded Um, We like to do this because we don't want to have to clean up the straw and it also um, acts as a heat um, 
holder. So if you're doing some new lawn areas or even an entire lawn, um, after you have it all raked out, you put down your seed and your fertilizer. Um, and I have to say, you don't really even need fertilizer if you use the Bull Country compost because it's got so many nutrients in it, it will act as your as your fertilizer also. So you can just put down your seed and then you top dress it with the Bull Country compost. You need just such a very light layer over it. It works for so many different things. It is your fertilizer. It is your mulching material. Um, it keeps the birds off of it. It keeps the soil warm. It keeps the soil moist. And it is going to have quicker germination um, help with quicker germination to your grass seed. And the next, the last best thing is you never have to rake it up. It's going to decompose into the soil. It's good for the soil and you never have to rake it up like you would straw. So it is um, more than a twofer. This is a fabulous product to use um, when you're putting grass seed down. It's also great when you're doing just some spot seeding and you just want to throw down some grass seed, throw some bull country compost on top of it, a very nice little um, layer of it, and you're good to go. Nothing else to do. You never have to worry about anything else. A fabulous, fabulous product. Um, and I don't say that just because they sponsor our show. Um, long before um, Tim started sponsoring our show, um, I was a firm believer in Bull Country Compost. Uh, we sell it um, by the bag. We also sell it bulk. And then we also sell the Hayseed Hank um, Super Soil that has the Bull Country Compost in it. So fabulous product. We recommend it um, over and over again every single day. Now, don't forget about mom. Um, Mother's Day is next Sunday, and so this is the time to start um, getting ready for or purchasing those gifts. Um, if you're bringing mom out to the greenhouse this week um, or this weekend or next weekend, um, we are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. till 4 p.m., and Sundays, noon till 3. Now, I have to tell you, next weekend, we will stay open uh, late on Saturday, and we will open open early on Sunday, Mother's Day. Um, we will close at three o'clock because I still have a mother that I need to take out to dinner. Um, so we do close at three on Mother's Day so I can take my mom out, but we will open early on Mother's Day for all of you last minute shoppers that need to come in and get things for Mother's Day. Now remember, this is still early. Mother's Day um, is early in the month. And so a lot of you think, oh, I'm going to buy mom, you know, all of her vegetable plants right now. And you can do that if you have a way to keep them. Even though we're not seeing any cold temperatures in the next 10 days, if y'all have lived in Ohio very long, you know that mid-May or even toward the end of May, we will have a cold night and have some frost. So we really recommend that you're not, you know, purchasing your bedding plants, um, your vegetable plants and, and planting them out into the beds this early. We really would recommend that you wait until toward the end of May to be doing that. And you will notice that we plant accordingly to our plan of when it's best to do it. So that, um, so some of the plants, um, are the tomatoes and peppers aren't real large yet um, because we want them at that perfect size to go into the ground toward the end of May. And several people will come into the greenhouse right now and they'll say, oh, the tomato plants are a little small. And we'll say, well, it's too early to put them out yet. So that's why they're still small. We aim um, their perfect size of the seedling to go out into the ground about the third week of May, um, not the third or fourth week of April. So just wanted to let you know of all of those kind of things. But this is a great time um, to get your Mother's Day hanging baskets and um, all of those flowers or planters. Um, and you can plant them up at the store or you can plant them up with mom at her house. And that will be a wonderful thing to do. Now, we have had a few other people in this week and that are still battling weeds in their lawn. And the Weed Beater FE is what we're really recommending um, to put down on your lawn for the weeds that are already up. Um, many of you missed that window of corn gluten meal. So if you have missed that window for your lawns to control the weeds as a pre-emergent weed control, um, remember the 
weeds still will blow in. So if you just want to use that high nitrogen fertilizer right now, because your grass is growing so quickly in the springtime, you can still use the corn gluten meal. It will stop any other weeds from germinating that blows in. So let's say that you um, have some dandelions already, but so you know that the corn gluten meal isn't going to kill those weeds but you want to prevent any more dandelions from germinating, you can still put the corn gluten meal down um, because if somebody else has them and they're not keeping them cut off before they go to seed, they could blow into your um, lawn and germinate there, and then you still will have more. If you put that corn gluten meal down, even though it's not going to catch the ones that are already up, you will prevent new weeds from coming up. And any weed that starts from a seed that would blow into your yard, the corn gluten meal will stop them from germinating. And so you can put the corn gluten meal down. The other thing to use your corn gluten meal for is for your flower beds and your garden. Any areas of your garden that you are not going to be doing direct seed. So if you put, um, if you direct seed your zucchini into the garden or your pumpkins into the garden, or your corn, or your green beans, or your peas, or anything like that, anything that you direct sow, you do not want to put corn gluten meal in that area. But if you are someone that in your garden you only grow seedlings, you come into your local independent uh, garden center or greenhouse, and you buy cucumber plants, you buy zucchini plants, you buy tomato plants, you buy okra plants, you buy pepper plants, you buy... I can go on, you know, cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli and beets and radishes. You buy all seedlings, little plants. You can literally put the corn gluten meal down on your garden and then plant your plants. That corn gluten meal is going to stop any weed seed from germinating. It's going to stop any seed from germinating. That's why you don't want to do it in an area where you will be doing direct sow. You only want to do it where you're seedlings. But if you are someone that only does seedlings, you can put it all over the entire garden, and then it will reduce the amount of weeds you have in the garden. Also, you can do this in your flower beds. Get your... um, This is the weekend that you might want to be out um, doing all of your bed cleanup, all of your landscape beds. Um, the weather's supposed to be great this weekend. You know, today is in the mid-60s, tomorrow in the mid-70s. Um, this is going to be a great weekend to get your spring cleanups done. And once you get all of your beds cleaned up, everything cut off, um, that needs cut off that you didn't do in the fall, um, weeds um, out, um, leaves raked out, um, before you mulch, put your corn gluten meal down and then do your mulching on top, you will stop a lot of weeds from germinating so that you have less weeds in your beds throughout the season that you aren't, you don't need to pool all the time. So if you were someone that used a pre-emergent chemical um, product um, in the past, you can do that organically with the corn gluten meal. And I think you'll be very, very pleased with how well it works. It is also a high nitrogen fertilizer. So it it really helps green things up. It gets that nitrogen into the soil. This is not a replacement though for your spring fertilization for your trees and shrubs. So if you have shrubs in the beds that you are weeding and cleaning up and you put the corn gluten meal down before you mulch your beds, this isn't a replacement for, you know, your holly tone or your plant tone or your flower tone. This is going to just do some extra nitrogen and help green things up. Um, If you have something that's not as dark green as it should be, this is definitely going to help green it up. But it's not going to be the feed that you need. Um, Those tones that are specifically made for those plants has minor nutrients that the plant needs as well, like calcium and magnesium and copper and iron and all of those things that the corn gluten meal does not have. But it is great for nitrogen and it is great to stop those weed seeds from germinating so that you will have less work to do in your beds. So you always want to make sure um, that you remember all of those things. And remember, if you have other questions um, that you would like to have answered, you can always do that on our Facebook page, Anthony Petiti Organic Greenhouse. Click on the messenger and message us your questions, and we will make sure that we get back with you. That's a very quick way to get your questions answered. Um, Emails, I check emails usually three times a day, but um, I am not, um, I don't have email um, on my phone automatically, but I do have our Facebook page there. So if someone um, asks a question, 
question on Facebook, I get a little notification on my phone and then I can get that question answered. Or you can always give us a call, 330-455-5997. We can answer your question very quickly that way, but we don't have the photo. So if you need us to see a photo, that Facebook page is also going to be good. You can email if you aren't on Facebook at cindypetiti at gmail.com. That's C-I-N-D-Y-P-E-T-I-T-T-I at gmail.com. Or better yet, bring your questions to the store. You'll be right there where you can get all of the solutions and the product that you need to fix it. At 5828 Columbus Road, we are on the corner of Columbus Road and Broadway. You do have to, if you're on Broadway, turn on to Columbus Road to the right and turn into our parking lot. We would love to see you out. Remember, the greenhouse is full and bursting and blooming. Watch our Facebook page for classes that are going on um, throughout um, the week. We do have a painting class with Monique tomorrow afternoon. So if you want to do something with mom um, tomorrow afternoon, give us a call and schedule that. It's at two tomorrow afternoon and there'll be a great fun painting class tomorrow afternoon in the greenhouse. Thanks so much for being with us and have a blessed week.